Welcome back, everyone. This is the third and final segment of the three-part series with Joe Jordan. So visions can be that real, but they're visions. But they're that real, okay? <laughs> That's the problem. People can't discern. The Bible will discern for you. Mm. So I'm bringing these people with God's word and the Holy Spirit helping them. They come to the truth. The next step is to bring them into a relationship and a fellowship with other believers, but a relationship with Jesus Christ. To feed them God's word, to build them up in God's word, to help them develop that relationship and their walk with Jesus Christ and God. Right? Amen. Hmm. Well, the enemy says, I'm going to fix that. Who's Working pretty good first couple of years, but then things started getting crazy. All of a sudden, this craziness shows up in the church. I fell for it. I'm a, I'll be honest. It was it hurt to be able to, to have to admit that I fell for it, but I did. I was honest when God showed me you're following a lie. Lost all my friends, just about. But I had to be honest, and I did. Here's what was happening. A new teaching was starting to show up, and it exploded. And it is taken across America in the past decade like the wildfires you hear about in California or anywhere else. It is eating through churches in a way that I've never seen anything eat through before. What's happening is in the new age realm, they're being seduced with so-called knowledge special knowledge the same thing that adam and eve were enticed with by the serpent okay from the tree of knowledge good and evil okay when you eat from this tree you will be like gods why because of the knowledge you will gain the new age metaphysical realm is the same lie the same lie hence the apple on the picture that I put, these aliens, these so-called masquerading entities are still offering the same lie. Okay? The New Age, is that's what they're doing. They say you can reach enlightenment through knowledge. So you chase this carrot on a stick. You never reach it. You never get enough. Okay? No. So we help these people break that chain of bondage. Through Christianity and Jesus Christ. And we're starting to help them. And then all of a sudden, here comes this Christian fringe researcher. And he's wanting to teach them this idea that he's come across. That makes them act the same way that they did before I helped them come out of the new age. Now they're all hooked on this knowledge again, this special Christian fringe knowledge, and they're chasing it, mm. and they can't stop. There's no more focus on the gospel that we were told to share from Acts. Now it's this new Christian fringe knowledge. They're back in bondage. And they're wondering why they still have experiences. I, I was having trouble trying to figure this out. What is this? I mean, I was falling for it. It made sense to be this teaching. It answered a lot of questions I had that I didn't have answers for. But then around 2004, God says, get off it. You're following a lie. 
Uh, okay. You gotta show me here. Well, he showed me here. Couldn't quite grasp it up here. Maybe I'm a little, you know, slow. But he, I got it here right away. I showed my mm. partner, Guy Malone, Alien Resistance. He says, thank you. He says, I see this. He says, I've been the one pushing this. You've just been following me as your partner. I said, he says, thank you. We're done with this. Guy took on a next mission of teaching that was just amazing. And it became the one-two punch with him and I over the next decade that has just been phenomenal. So, yeah, we were on the wrong thing. And that's when we lost our friends when we came out and said, we are no longer going to teach this. Well, they took it all personal, like we were going after them, but we never were going after anybody personally. We were just saying we weren't following that teaching. I couldn't explain why, really, because I only had it here. But over the past 10 years, is God's finally given it here. And again, this is right back to the foundation of Christianity. It's right back to the foundation of what the end is going to be. It's back to that same foundation of worship. Because that is what the end is going to be about. Knowing whether you're worshiping properly or not. This is how this strong delusion is coming down. That is spoken of. This strong delusion that's spoken of being coming in the end is supposed to be so powerful, so strong, that if it were possible, even the very elect will be deceived. Right. Yes. That means it's going to be pretty darn complicated to figure out. And pretty darn convincing to deceive people. Who sends this delusion? Yeah, well, God sends the delusion himself. He does. A lot of people don't think about that. They go, well, the enemy sends the delusion. No, the enemy's perpetrating it. But God's sending it. You go, well, God, why would God do that? Think about it. It's going to sort out who's really, really understanding his word who's really paying attention, who's really got a true relationship of understanding him and worshiping him the way that he's always told us from Genesis and what he's asked us to do. So let's get to that. There's a teaching out there that I'm talking about, and it says that there are these half-human, half-angelic people running around. You know what? I got the same thing from the New Age realm. They're called alien hybrids. You can go on the Internet, Google alien hybrids. Go on Facebook, look up alien hybrids. You will get Facebook pages of many groups of people that talk to each other that believe they're alien hybrids. You go on Google, you will get all sorts of support groups where people come together, like abductees that say they're alien hybrids. You go to Christian sites, and you will find people that believe that they are Nephilim hybrids. Where do they get that from? Well, hmm. remember... The Christians believe that these entities are, the aliens are angelic, deceiving humanity. I agree. What's the purpose of the deception? To take our eyes off the one true God. Absolutely. Anybody gets involved in the UFO phenomenon, their eyes come away from the one true God in one way or another. It always leads them away. Great deception. 
So what are we dealing with here? You go back to Genesis. These people think that this so-called Genesis 6-4 is referring to the same thing that the New Age and uh, alien abduction realm are talking about. Why would you even think they're the same? Why would you think that the Bible is talking about something that the most deceptive deception in the world is talking about? That's a red flag in the first place to me. True. It's got to be a, the enemy counterfeits everything, not duplicates it. Mm -hmm. So here's the scripture that they're using. There were giants in the earth in those days. Why do I pause? Because there's a semicolon there. Mm. And also after that, comma, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, comma, and they bare children to them, comma, and the same became mighty men, which were of old, comma, men of renown. They think that these sons of God are fallen angels. And they think that these giants are the hybrid offspring of their mating with these uh, daughters of men, which are human women. Well, there's some things here to consider. If you look at the scripture and take it, break it down, one, if the offspring were this, these Nephilim or, or giants, as they say, mm -hmm. how did we get giants before the sons of God went into the daughters of men? That's what the verse says. What, do you just not, not look at that part? Just take that part out? Mm, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you also got scripture that says, Jesus says that angels are not married, nor are they given in marriage. Angels cannot produce offspring. I, I, we just take that one out too. Right. And the immediate context actually shows that the sons of God are the righteous lineage of Seth and the daughters of men are those from the genealogy of Cain. If you actually take it down through the genealogy, that's what we're looking at here. This is about worship. This whole thing, this, this whole my seed, thy seed, this whole thing is about a righteous bloodline, not bloodline, a righteous line to get to Jesus, okay? A righteous line of worship because it's about worship in the end that we're trying to get to. This is what they're trying to show you, okay? Because he's going to show you what happens if you don't worship properly. Bear with me. Okay? The wider context of Genesis shows that the battle is between a righteous seed and a wicked seed. Okay? Spiritual seed. Right. That's how you get that. Because... In every essence, we were all wicked, were we not? Aren't you born wicked? For all have fallen short. Ah! For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And all can be saved. Correct? So there right. cannot be a demonic bloodline if all can be saved. Very good research. I'm sorry, I'm just logical, and that's what the word says. Very good. Very good. But we'll throw that out. And then you get to the widest context of context of scripture shows that the sons of God are those who have been born again into Christ's kingdom. Sons of God are a class of people who are identified in several ways in the Bible. 
This can be seen in, for instance, Roman 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay? Another widest content of Scripture, this is one that's really amazing because there's a comment that says these beings were created through the these hybrids were created through the relationship, the relations between an angelic being and a human being. Correct? I'll show you mm -hmm. quotes from all these researchers that say that themselves. As I put this together and put it out publicly, you'll see the quotes out of their mouths. Okay? Not yet. But they're coming. But for the show, I'll tell you that they're there. But what does the scripture say? What does God say? 1 Corinthians eleven twelve. For as a woman was made from man, so man is now born of woman. And all things, all things are from God. So what part wow. is from the fallen angels? Wow. Very interesting. Yeah. Mm. Wait, that's not it. Malachi 2.10. Have we not all one father? Hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? That's Malachi. Oh, there's more. Ephesians 3, 9. And to make all men see all men, all men, what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God. Ooh. Wait to this part. Who created all things by Jesus Christ? Starting to get this? Yeah, it's now very cool. let's Would jump you... up to remember this is foundation foreshadowing of a time to come. So why this is <laughs> also these same people, I'll show you quotes later when I get it in print. They will tell you the reason for the flood was because of this abomination. Nowhere in scripture will it tell you it's because of a hybrid. Do you know why what the Bible says the reason for the flood was? That there was no not one righteous. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I created from the mm -hmm. face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowl of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made, I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So what happened to these sons of God? Who were they? These sons of God, making better understanding, were the righteous line of Seth. So why did they, why did this righteous line of Seth intermingle with the ungodly line of Cain? That's a good question. And if you really get into the study, it answers it and opens up to things you would just be amazed by. Hmm. You know what it says? How this worked? In every instance, how does the enemy work? How does the enemy convince people to do bad things? Hmm. Influence. Yeah. Influence. It influenced Eve. It influenced the brother to kill his other brother. It influenced the ungodly women of Cain's line to do something. When you do the study, you'll be blown away. It's all right there because it tells you that 
they put it he put in their minds that if they would seduce these righteous men that their offspring would be special people right what kind of special people hmm. that they would be mighty men men of renown mm -hmm. okay yes that's that what they sense. would be in other words it's like taking a downtrodden woman and she goes ah and making her a gold digger that she can better herself and her offspring by going after some rich good guy right mm -hmm. you understand what i just said so get this when you do the study you know what the the study says that how they you how they tempted them through ornament in other words they decked themselves out with gold earrings bracelets and all of this stuff to make themselves appear very attractive and seducing to these righteous men hmm. yep so what happened is the enemy got this ungodly line to seduce the only remnant the only remnant left okay of the righteous line the, the line of seth mm. there was no one left but adam i mean but noah okay so he says i'm done i'm gonna wipe them all out and start over so he starts out with noah and his family okay now were there giants absolutely but they were human mm -hmm. no problem i have no problem with giants were there giants in the land when they went into the promised land no problem how'd they get there giants is genetic okay mm -hmm. human genetic yes. no problem that can easily carry over on the ark but they're mm -hmm. not hybrids it's a genetic trait there goliath was not a half fallen angel he was just a human giant mm. based off of the scriptures you read it it would stand to be the uh stand to be true uh, in regards to what you are i challenge anybody to show me scripture that shows otherwise you'd mm -hmm. have to throw a lot of stuff out yeah. which i think is what's been happening mm -hmm. you know it's it's Go that to goes Mark. back to that word syncretism in terms of uh using certain passages of scripture to support your own beliefs on on the subject you go back you go to the book of mark and there's another prime example of what we're dealing with when it when jesus he deals with the demoniacs there were mm -hmm. no hybrids these were right. these weren't these weren't demonic hybrids these were spiritually influenced okay right. these were possessions yeah. if, if if that mm -hmm. he cast these demons out you know yeah and he gives a he gives an exact method on how he did that right there in the same chapter of Ephesians, chapter six. You know, yep. verse nineteen was the exact example of of what he did in Mark. How did he do it? Did he just nod his head and they left? No, he spoke them out. Verse nineteen says that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly. In context, that's talking about the enemy that's a offensive move to the enemy uh, that's what some of these testimonies show that i've got and you know what it's interesting because that ends with to make known the mystery of the gospel it's the christ in you. christ 
Christ in you. And that is, that is uh, a sword in, in the, the, the enemy's stomach. Yes. That is the spiritual warfare that we are, are talking about here. That shows who you worship. Yeah. So it does all go back to it goes back to worship, and um, and it really is a good segue into why we why even believers now who are brought into this line of thinking and this research can continuously say there are physical manifestations of these craft of hybrids. Um, I mean, there's talk about now about becoming Nephilim, Nephilim with the, uh, the vaccine. Um, so, yeah, I think it has definitely, at least through what you've said and have shown through your research, it has shown that this is truly a false message. Um, it's almost... Uh, uh, yeah, it, it could be looked at as heretical. Yeah, teaching. Absolutely. So, this message that you are saying is just very important. It is so important to get out uh, among believers because it can do some damage, especially how you mentioned the, the woman who came up asking or saying how she could not be saved because she believed she was part of that Nephilim. And now if we are in that day and age where we're talking about a vaccine that could, uh, an RNA vaccine that could potentially, you know, change your DNA to become Nephilim, uh, we could be seriously getting into uh, an area that can do major damage. You know, first off, <laughs> the fallen angels have no DNA. They're spirit. You have to understand that. That, that. that science fiction they're teaching, okay? That's that gray line I talked about all the way from the beginning. And the mm -hmm. sad thing is people aren't educated enough to, to, to understand it, and they're too lazy to research it and do the work themselves. They're, they're just sitting there getting their ears scratched for them, you know, right. which is really sad. That, yeah. that is really sad. This, this RNA cannot do that. You know, if they understand what's really happening, it's allowing the, the DNA to have a fix to where a virus can't attack it is what it's doing. You need to do the real study of what this does, okay? Mm -hmm. There is no demonic DNA. That's not what this is. It's a spiritual influence is what demonic is. It's mm -hmm. a spiritual influence. All right. That's all it can be. Scripture mm -hmm. shows you that over and over and over, unless you want to throw some more out or unless you want to misinterpret some more, you know, get back to God's word. Let him do it and let him do it the way he says it needs to be done. This mm -hmm. is what this is coming down to, is if you don't get this right in the end, you're going to be in trouble, okay? What better way to lose a population than to keep them from being helped from a disease that's going to lose a population? How old are you, Greg? I'm 43. You're not old enough to remember what I remember. I remember taking sugar cubes with a vaccine drop on it for polio. I went to school with kids that were crippled from polio. We took a vaccine because we didn't want to be polio like those kids. It wiped out polio in my generation when I was younger. Smallpox, gone, okay? You know, it's America that's looking at this in the most ridiculous way. The same country that's under this crazy teaching of mm. aliens and UFOs and even crazier teaching in its own church 
of this Nephilim hybrid. Mm -hmm. In this country that I live in, in Korea, where they don't get into all of that crazy teaching, they see this as a help to keep their people alive. The way that vaccines have been looked at for many, many decades. Do you know that up until the early 80s, this was one of the top countries in the world for social diseases mm. until the government finally got a handle on it and made it law that you got the hepatitis A, the B, and any other vaccine at birth to prevent these social diseases. They don't have that problem anymore. Mm -hmm. America's rampant with it. They don't want to take vaccine. Oh, who's something in it? Who's putting that into your mind? Mm -hmm. You got this whole thing flipped upside down. Who's behind that? Yeah. So-called believers in Christ. Yeah. This deception, this delusion that even the very elect would be deceived if it were possible. Mm -hmm. You think you're going to get hits on this show? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, very good research, uh, Joe. It's, uh, it has been amazing having you on of course uh, this is going to be broken up into three parts i can see that already <laughs> but that is okay um and i think um i think it is important for you to tell people how they can reach you well first of all my ministry is about hope the one thing i told you in the beginning that those people were looking for in my meetings they weren't finding the one thing that god gave us in this ministry ce4 was the one thing that nobody else in the world is offering, even today in this field, is hope. Hope that this experience can be stopped permanently. And that's what we offer through a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're experiencing anything like this, or you know somebody that's experiencing this, or you know relatives, children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, anybody that's involved in any type of participation in the UFO study or community, they need this information, okay? Share this show. Share the book. All my research is right here. Finally, in one format, everything I've talked about is right here. Plus, 60 never before seen testimonies right here. Okay. Plus, there's many more to come. Working on two more books. And if you want to talk to me personally, that's what I do. Okay. I am not afraid to put my contact out there. My website, www.ce, the number four research.com my email c e4 president at yahoo.com okay contact me either way we have a facebook page c e4 research okay got another facebook page it's named after the book piercing the cosmic veil okay you're welcome to come there. I've got a actual YouTube channel that we're doing shows just like this, where we actually bring in the testimonies on, where you can see them face to face and hear their stories and hear their conversions of their life to through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Beware, bring the tissues. I do. <laughs> um, they're amazing. Um, that's called the Piercing the Cosmic Veil Show on YouTube. Also, all my videos, all my taped conferences, all my radio shows, 
um, some of the interviews I've done, all up on my CE4 Research YouTube channel. And it's all there for you. If you want to share this information in any way, please take it and run. God gave me all of this for free. Okay? Please take it and run. If you are really wanting to do this, you are really hurting for finance, and you can't afford my book, I mean, really, don't, don't just rip me off, but if you really need help, contact me. I'll work with you, all right? This is all about helping people, okay? I need helpers to help people. They estimate, this is the secular realm now, they estimate that through the polls that have done over the years, there's probably in America alone, of course, where else are they going to be? Um, over two to two and a half million people have been through this experience and have no hope. That's a mission field. You want to be part of it? Contact me. Thank you, Greg. Very good. Well, thank you, Joe. And uh, I just have to say, I really love your disclaimer uh, in the book. Where you're saying, <laughs> warning, let's put that up there. Yeah. The following information will change your preconceived notions on the UFO and alien abduction phenomenon. I love that. Absolutely. I love that disclaimer. Uh, and you've been using that for years. I have. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> using that for a very long time uh but uh i want to thank uh, all the viewers for watching and please make sure that you are uh you're getting in touch with joe jordan uh, if you have any questions about this we will certainly um take your questions here too and we could always forward them on to him if needed uh certainly in the comments section and um we know that you're going to be speaking with la about this what were you just revealed here on this uh, program. So sure. um, any ideas to when that that may be? And what do you think his uh, thoughts would be on this? Because that will change a lot <laughs> on his um, perspective and his research. I hope he's open to it, listening anyway. Um, 10, 11 years ago, you know, he asked me, he said, you know, if I'm wrong, show me. And it, it's, it's taken that long for, you know, God to finally get it through this thick skull. And uh, I think I'm at a point now where I can take him through and show him in God's word what God had put on my heart but hadn't completed up here yet. And uh, that's how I'm going to approach him is just say, you know, um, I'd like to show you. You asked, and I'd just like the courtesy to have the time to take you through and do a little Bible study with you and see how the Holy Spirit reacts to it with you. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, hold it against you if you don't accept it. It's it's between you and God. So mm -hmm. very good. Very good. Well, uh, we would be interested in finding out his reaction to that, uh, especially yeah. since we're I love the guy to death. You know, I really <laughs> do. I, ne uh, I can't tell you anybody I've had so much fun being around at a conference. Yeah. You know, he, he, he's one of the most powerful praise and worship guys that I've had a chance to listen to when he gets on that guitar and sings, you know, I just love to listen to him. Yeah. I would just love to see him on fire with a, you know, a, a teaching to me that would be more spot on because yeah. he's the right guy to be up front. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks again, Joe and um, much, many blessings to your ministry and, uh, we pray that many people will be open to this and receive it. Um, it, it is definitely a major revelation in regards to this uh, line of research. And um, I pray that, you know, it will be well received. And I hope to see you in the U.S. this year. Yes, that would be great. If, definitely if, if I get know. a chance to come, I'm coming by to see you. Uh, yeah, de you definitely will be. Co COVID or no COVID, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, there sure. you go. 
<laughs> if my wife makes me uh, or you uh, double mask or triple mask up, then I'll make sure that we do that. <laughs> no problem. All right, brother. Have a good one. God bless you. Thank you, Greg. It's been right. a blessing. Yes, same here. God bless.